Yo, what's going on? LinkedIn and YouTube and Facebook, all of the social medias. I hope you're all doing wonderful and amazing as per usual. I'm not in the car tonight, as you can clearly see. Or I put a green screen behind me and took a picture of my setup at home. And I'm actually in the car right now doing this live stream. Maybe. No, I'm just kidding. I'm at home. Anyway, hope you're all doing doing wonderful. Today we're doing a we're, we're doing the, the the typical Tuesday live. Ask me anything. Let's talk about getting into IT. Like, what challenges you got? What's the problem? You got some some setbacks. Trying to advance out of the the help desk. Trying to get into cybersecurity. What is that, right? What is cybersecurity? Somebody's going to ask, "How do I get into cybersecurity?" And I'm going to tell you, "Hey, figure out what you want to do in cybersecurity because there's a lot of different things to do." How to create your own email server? Uh, you can spin that up on probably VirtualBox. I mean, it's it's not going to be the the necessarily the, the the easiest thing to do in the world, but I know that there are YouTube uh, videos out there that exist that can walk you through that. Otherwise, like you could just spin up like you know Azure, AWS in the cloud, and probably make something happen. You could also sign up for like Office three sixty five. Um, like I know that I use like Office 365 service and it has where I get like a lot of admin privileges, not like a ton. Um, but that's kind of that's helpful in its own way just to kind of understand like Office 365, right? Because that's used everywhere. Um, so that's something that you could potentially do. Otherwise, I'd look up on uh, on YouTube. There's I know there's tutorials that exist that can walk you through that. Google certification versus CompTIA. Why do you want to go there, man? Come on. We, we've gone there like 8 billion times. We know. There's no comparison at all. I mean, the Google certification, like the information that it contains is pretty useful, right? It's like, it's pretty good. Uh, it's just like the marketability of it doesn't make you stand out, right? It's not going to get you places necessarily, which is unfortunate, like, that is unfortunate because it does have good information, but not a lot of employers are looking for that certification. So you have that, that to contend with, you know, it, it's fine. If you want to, if you're trying to learn as with like most certifications, right? Like certifications are a great tool to help you learn something and validate in some way that you have learned something, but a certification by no means is any type of guarantee that, you know, you're going to get any type of employment or anything. Like certification has no guarantees other than, hey, you learned something. Nice job, LinkedIn.com. What did LinkedIn.com do? The Sandbox Bandit. You're very good at your job as a field tech. You don't feel like you're smart enough to become a network admin, cybersecurity analyst, or sysadmin. I think uh, everybody feels that way, honestly. Like any anytime you're looking at taking uh, the next step, I don't think you ever feel like you're going to be ready. I don't, I don't think, and, and like, I can say this for a fact because somebody who I'm very close with, in fact, feels that way and, and they work like literally at one of the, just think of Fang, right? Like they work at one of the biggest organizations in the entire world and they still feel like they don't deserve to be there and they shouldn't be there. And it's just the most amazing and most humbling thing in the world for me to see that. Duan Lightfoot, what's up, brother? Thank you very much for the super chat, man. I appreciate you, brother. It's good to see you. Hey, Duan, if you if you if you aren't busy, bro, do you wanna you should hop on this this call right now? I can send you the the link. And you could just dial in and chit chat with me. I'm putting you on the spot. You don't have to do it, but I would love to have you, brother. That would be amazing. Um but yeah, I, like I said, I don't think anybody feels like that like they're they're ready, man. Like you just have to go for it, right? It's like imposter syndrome. It's a great thing. It really, really is. Raven Life. Love IT currently in logistics. Want to make the change? CCNA Network Plus need a minimum of 56000 to start uh, your current rate of living. Uh, definitely go for the CCNA. The Network Plus is going to be great for learning the foundations, but I wouldn't say go ahead and get that certification. I would study for like the Network Plus. Study a lot of that material. Not all of it because it's very in-depth. Uh, but just learn the foundations of networking, like the OSI model, Learn you can learn about like IP addressing, uh, subnetting, the different ports, protocols, and things like that. 
And then once you kind of have those foundations down, then going after something like the CCNA, because the CCNA is going to be so extremely valuable for you. And that could definitely get you closer to that, those figures that you're looking at. Give you five minutes. All right, brother. Hang on. I will uh, let me invite you to this. I'm going to have to send you this link. I'm going to copy this link here. I'm going to have to email it to you. Or I'll send it to you over over uh, a Twitter DM. Pop it in your DMs, Mr. Lightfoot. There is the link. There. Holla. All right. Back back to the chat. Anyway, yeah, uh, definitely get your CCNA, man. Uh, that'll set you definitely towards the right path. Oh, man, Tim, thank you for the super chat, brother. I appreciate that. Just want to say thanks. Your videos helped you figure out where to start. Got your A-plus in February and just got a verbal offer for a desktop support tech. Dude, that's awesome. Just waiting on your offer letter. Congratulations and good luck, man. That is that is phenomenal. Like, that is so great to hear. The A-plus, man, like, th that is such a valuable certification. That certification gets so much, like, crap from people who've worked in the field for a while. Um, and even just crap from people and, and just in general, but honestly, like that certification can help you get a job. It really, really can because people still look for it. It still has some type of validation that says, Hey, you know, something about it clearly because you passed this ridiculous certification. And I'm not even going to lie and tell you that that, this, that certification isn't ridiculous because it's a, a little ridiculous, but it has a lot of value. So thank you, Tim, for the super chat. Again, I appreciate it. Good luck to you. Seriously. If I miss your questions, I'm sorry. It's going to be hard to keep up. And I know as uh, as soon as Mr. Uh, Lab Every Day dials in, it'll be really hard to keep up with the chat. Routes in networking that earn $80,000 plus uh, experience. So that route in networking that you want to go for to earn that much money is just going to take a couple of years of experience, typically. Like that's honestly the way that you have to look at it. I mean, I, I think that's truth. I think there's fact there. It'd be very difficult for you to start off making something like that in IT, especially in networking. So after a couple of years, I think 80K is more than achievable. So landing any type of entry level role and working your way up from there. And that can easily be achieved in a few years. If you are dedicated and if you are hungry for it, you can make that happen very, very quickly. For sure. Raven Life, what is the fastest way to get into networking while learning CCNA ETC? Can't wait to leave your current situation. The fastest way to learn to get into networking while learning CCNA? Uh, labbing every day, which hopefully we'll hear about here in a minute. Hopefully. We'll, we'll talk about lab every day. I'm sure we'll talk about some, some AWS stuff too, which that'll be exciting. But anyway. Yeah, learning CCNA is building labs, right? Like have uh, like download Packet Tracer and start spinning up, you know, uh, virtual environments through there, right? And if you can afford it, go ahead and buy some used like networking equipment. Got to get hands on, man. Reach out to school districts, reach out to, out to like local businesses, see if they have any equipment, like old equipment for sale that they're recycling. You know, you can very often find like used switches and and routers, uh, you know, on Craigslist or like Facebook facebook marketplace and they might have like a, a couple like broken ports or something but it's all good it might even not have like the best working fan or the fan might be loud af but it'll work and it'll be great jeffrey you're studying for the security plus certification you want to start pen test plus next is the best route uh so studying for your security plus good luck have fun with that um I mean, if you want to get into pen testing, then the pen test plus could be a good route. But I would personally say, hey, if you're getting your security plus and you're looking to go the penetration tester route, I would tell you to take a look at TCM security. It's these guys right here. I need to create like a little uh, banner for that. Check out, uh, let's see. Security at... Hang on, I'm typing something out. I can't type and talk at the same time. I'm not that talented. Okay, I think I got it.
uh, what is it called? Okay, let me. Okay, check out TCM security. And I would check out, uh, I would start with the practical ethical hacking course for sure. It's 30 bucks, but it is well worth the $30 that you spend on it. You can actually go out on YouTube right now. And if you search for uh, practical ethical hacking, it's by the Cyber Mentor. You get the first 12 hours of it for free. That would be your next best bet after uh, Security Plus. I got Mr. Duan Lightfoot who's dialed in now. So I'm gonna add him to this call. So please, please hold. What up? Can you hear me? I can't hear you. I'm talking to you. Yeah, you. He, he can't hear me. Can you hear me, Zach? I hear you. Yeah, I can't hear you. Hold on. Can't hear me. You change your settings. Yeah. You let me know when you're good. I'll let him adjust that. How are the newer Microsoft certs? That's a great question. Anything that says Microsoft on it is gold. Like, I mean, that's just kind of like truth. I I have to look at things from a different perspective nowadays for, to like to give you guys the best advice that I can. And when when you're looking at a resume, right, and you see Microsoft on there as far as like credentials, that's going to stand out. Like that's just fact. Now, as far as like the information, I can't necessarily help you there, but I'm I assure you, that'd be good for you. Can you hear me now? I can't hear you, Brandon, but I would love to. Get free Microsoft certs from Microsoft Skills Exchange. Holler. <laughs> Do I have any tips on how to stay healthy in IT, bro? N no, man. It's hard. I bought a stand-up desk and then I bought a, a bike desk or a bike so I could put my bike underneath the desk and that helped a little bit. But man, eating less, that helps. Working out helps. Ooh, Adrian, can you give me an example of a tech interview question? You're interviewing soon. I can, but hang on. Let me see if, uh, if, if Dewan's working here. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. What's up, family? What's going on, man? Thanks, thanks for joining me. Right, like, just like on the whim, right? <laughs> on the whim, yes. How are you and, doing, man? I haven't talked to you in a while. I was gonna actually text you this morning, and then things just got crazy busy because I haven't heard from you in a while. Yeah, I've been in um, DC house hunting, as well as I had a tech conference I had to go to. So it's been busy. You're a busy guy. Yeah. So I, it. it for people who don't know who you are, I need to put on headphones, I think, so there's not feedback. Um, <clears throat> for people who don't know who you are, why don't you tell tell people about you, sir? Yeah, so, um, hold up. Hey, what's up, team? My name is Dewan Lightfoot. My channel is Lab Every Day. I am a tech professional that's been on YouTube for about four years. I focus on network engineering. I've worked for many organizations. I'm an Air Force veteran. Um, what else? Yeah, so I worked for Cerner, I worked for Cisco, and now I am working for AWS. And my passion is, of course, networking, and now more specifically cloud networking and helping you all get in tech. I can't hear you, bro. Of course, it would change the microphone along with the <laughs> headphones because smart like that. Anyway, I, uh, I I love what you're doing now because it seems like you're really excited about it. It seems like you're super excited to be like diving into to new stuff, learning new things. And I know we were supposed to sync recently even to, to talk about that. We didn't, of course, but that's all right. We're always busy, but... You're excited about your new stuff, man. I love that. Yeah, I'm extremely excited. Um, like I mentioned before, you know, network engineer is my background. And I kind of shifted probably about three years ago into doing network automation and really focusing on Python and having learning about pipelines and stuff. And so once that kind of shift happened 
it kind of started opening up different doors for me in my career. And um, yeah. And so once I went to Cisco, I started doing the DevNet thing, which was awesome. I really enjoyed that. But I, I always felt like there was something missing. Like there's a part of IT that I want to know more about. And that part of IT is the cloud. And it just so happened one day, you know, my manager now, Romain, reached out to me directly, was like, hey, what do you think about um, coming to AWS? And I'm like, I don't know. I really like it here at Cisco. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so through, you know, our conversation and thinking about what, uh, what I really wanted for my career, you know, I kind of just decided to make that pivot to go all in on the cloud. Best decision you made yet or what? <laughs> I think it's a really good decision um, just because of, you know, the pandemic kind of made me look at everything different. When I was working for Cerner, I spent, you know, 13 hour days standing up VPNs for hospitals around the country. And during that time, one of the things I noticed is that companies have their on-premise infrastructure, their data centers and they can manage their workloads efficiently. But if they really need to scale and scale immediately, that's kind of hard to do because as you know, Zach, you got to procure and purchase servers. You got to get the IT staff. You got to plan. You got to do all these. And actually building out a new server could take months. But with the cloud, you can do this in minutes. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's a totally different ball game now, and it changes how we approach everything. Sorry, I was sending a tweet out there. No, Sorry. man, that, that I know you could spin up like you could like the fact that you could spin up servers now in just like minutes is just mind blowing to me, right? Like that that's just crazy. Not not now, but I mean we've been able to do that for a long time. But from the cloud, like that's one of like one of the things that like drew me to it initially was like, oh wow, it's gonna like speed things up like tremendously. Like it's gonna make access to things. Like so, like it's going to be so much easier to gain like just the access to the resources that we need to, you know, make our organizations work more smoothly. Like that's the, the initial like kind of like purpose that I saw with. I was like, this is going to be great, but like now I feel like you're seeing like all of these different things like that like is essentially just driven from the cloud that you like didn't see before, right? Like they, you you just didn't ha have that grasp on, right? Yeah, it, I mean, we talk about spinning up a server in minutes, right? But we're not even talking about spinning up servers in, min in minutes. We're talking about spinning up thousands of servers as you need them, not just in minutes, but let's say your site just starts getting hit with a heavy workload. We have a thing on AWS called auto scale. And so we'll scale those services automatically as you need them. And so once that, you know, those connections start to die down, we'll scale down as you need them. So the cost, the efficiency, the elasticity, all of that kind of changes how we approach business on our infrastructures. For sure. Now, I, to hit like most of the audience that I want to hit with this real quick, right? Right. They want to get into the cloud, right? Somebody said, hey, go learn the cloud because you can make a lot of money, mm. right? <laughs> this is somebody... Out of the blue, they they were working as an accountant for the last year, five years. They've been working as the uh, nurse for the past ten years. They were, you know, an attorney for twenty years. Somebody said, "Go work in the cloud." What do you need to know? Man, what do you what do you need to know? Because because that that is the question, and that is like a, a statement that you hear so often is that just go work in the cloud, go learn the cloud. But what is what is it that you need to learn and understand to work within the cloud? So we have different roles in the cloud. It's not just like, what do you need to know? You know, it's kind of like working in uh, IT infrastructure. What do you need to know to be in IT? That's a general statement, right? So I think for it, one of the things about getting up to speed with the cloud is starting with like a foundational certification. Um, AWS, we have the cloud practitioner. And so what this teaches you is an overview of not just the cloud, but AWS services. It introduces you to the AWS console. And on AWS, we have over 200 services that we offer. And 
we're not really focused on teaching you all 200 services at the cloud practitioner level, but we do have services that you need to understand and know about, like what is a VPC? What is a S3 bucket? Um, all of these pieces are what makes up the, I would say the AWS cloud offices that businesses use, like Netflix uses S3 buckets to offers Netflix. You know what I mean? So understanding this and how businesses are applying the cloud to their organizations to, like I mentioned before, to have that speed, to eliminate some of the costs that they have, to um, be elastic and span, uh, expand their infrastructure as they need it, the cloud practitioner will help you understand that. So that's just like an overview to get you started. And then from there, if you want to operate in the cloud, now you have to understand how to be a solutions architect. And that's where the solutions architect certification comes in to say, okay, I have an idea and I have a general understanding of what the cloud is and what AWS services are. But now let me go deeper into the, being a solutions architect, meaning, okay, AWS has over 200 services, but what will be the best solution for the customer's use case? And as a solutions architect, you'll be able to break that down and help a customer have the right solution for whatever problem they are facing. Awesome. That, that broke it down pretty well. So um, are, are there any other like fundamentals that you should kind of be aware of or should you kind of identify like where in the cloud you want to be spending your time, right? Because there are so many different roles within the cloud. So, you know, how do you identify like where that is like what what, that, that fits with you? Well, think of it this way. You know, I mentioned a solutions architect, right? Picture them as being like a consultant for an organization to help them with solutions. You got to have somebody that can help with the solution thing. You got to have somebody implement the solutions. And then you got to have somebody manage those solutions. Now, with the management comes in to where you can have network engineers that may, in a smaller business, that may have to do on-premise and in the cloud. Or you can have an a, a entire cloud team that focuses on just cloud services. And so when you talk about what you need to know, first you need that foundational understanding of the cloud. The second thing you need to know is Linux because many of the EC2 instances, many of the Docker containers, um, Terraform, Ansible, you name it, this backend databases are gonna be ran on Linux, right? So you gotta have some type of Linux background. And the third thing I would say is a coding language because um, once we are, on the cloud and we're building out our cloud inf infrastructure, we're not doing this um, every time in the console. What we want to do is have a state of our infrastructure. infrastructure. So something like Terraform to be able to have infra um, infrastructure as code. So now whenever you need to build out new infrastructure, you have a state file that you modify and you apply that to deploy your services on AWS. And on AWS, we also have cloud formation too, where you just have a template and all of that. Like it's it's a totally different game than being on, on premise. Yeah, on it's, 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 it's taken like a Microsoft deployment toolkit and like SCCM to like this whole new level of just <laughs> like craziness, man. It's just, oh, it blows my mind, man just how far we've come in the last few years with all of this is just god and like docker right like so is that something like that you're getting into as well with like i guess containers more so yeah um so when i was doing networking um automation at center a, a lot of the um network automation that i was doing was ran on docker containers you know hosted on the linux server so yeah. <laughs> when you think about what we're doing now, I mean, Docker is a huge part because, as you know, virtual machines are are heavy. They, they're, they're a heavy load. But if you just need um, to write some code that does one thing and it does one thing pretty, like, really well, you're going to create a Docker container, spin that instance up, it does what it needs to do, then it's gone. Yeah. Oh, God. Uh, all this, uh, it's just so fascinating how it all works now. Like every time I start like diving into this stuff, like it just, it blows my mind like more and more. And like, I just think about all the different ways to to utilize some of these things. So it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's come a long way. I mean, I remember, you know, my early days at IT, I, before I joined, you were talking about um, like home labs and getting started with the CCNA, right? And I was thinking <laughs> like, if I showed you a picture of my lab now, it's basically my computer. I got a switch just in case I need to connect other devices. 
and that's it. Yeah. I don't have, I don't, I gave away all my routers. I gave away all my switches. I don't have any of that stuff. If I need to lab up a switch or a router, I do it through CML or I use um, even G. What was the first one you said? CML, Cisco Modeling Labs. I haven't heard of that one. Ah, yeah, you, you should. Be, because the difference between the two is that it's it's um, it's through Cisco, right? So it's Cisco's tool for labbing. And they have like an enterprise version as well, but then they have a personal version. But through CML, you get all of the images. It's like 200 bucks. And you don't have to worry about getting Cisco iOS images. You just pay for CML one time and now you can spin up your whole lab. Like I got to set up to a point to where I create, it has an API. So now I can just push a button on my screen, stream deck and spin up my lab as I need it. Like, and I do that through Python. Like my lights, for instance, check this out. Pulling up links, sorry. You see that, Zach? Are you looking at the screen? Yeah, yeah, I see that. Yeah, I wrote some code to automate the lights in my office. Oh, some like if that if this then that type of stuff or what? Yeah, basically. It's like what? 100 lines of code. In the That's awesome. The, the, um, the Hue Lights API. Do you have it set up through your stream now so you can just like have people type in like the color and change the color? I haven't had time to do that because I know. I thought about doing that, but then it's like, what if like everybody's doing it? You know what I mean? Okay. So I had to kind of put some type of um, rate limit so that way they had time to process one and then maybe five, ten seconds later process another one. You'll figure it out because you're smart. <laughs> For sure. So how are, Man, how else are things going? I'm going to take just take a minute because I haven't talked to you in a minute. I just need to know. Everything going all right? Uh, yeah, everything is great, man. Um First of all, I want to say thank you to you for coming to celebrate my birthday. You know, Dude, that, was, that was awesome, man. That was that was like such a good time. I needed that, so thank you and thank your wife, man. Thank your wife for messaging me. That was like the best thing ever. Sorry, yo, I had a blast, man. That was like the best birthday I've ever had in my life. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, it was worth the drive for sure. Yeah, and came back with a new car, so that was different. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> comes to visit that's how you balling you can just go on <laughs> no, vacation and buy a new car like yo i would no. think i'm gonna buy a car today that's balling nah <laughs> i wish that would have been i was trying to get courtney to go to the tesla dealership i'm like come on let's go look come on she wouldn't she wasn't having none of that have you been in one before no i, I should have just i went. was trying i know i was trying man but yeah. next time <laughs> next time yeah. Well, I'm glad you're doing well, man. You, uh, I know people are going to uh, want to ask some questions, so you want to do some AMA? Yeah, That's what sure. we're here for. Let's do it. Right? That's yeah. what I was here for. Let's do it. This Raven Life. You want one of those hats? Where do you get one? I was just talking to Heath about hats today because um, people keep asking about the hats. Soon, I hope. Oh, shout out to the, the Cyber Mentor for sure. I just sent him the link to this. He should hop on the live stream right now too. That'd be nice. Hold him. He was he was sending me messages while you were talking. I was like, dude, I'm trying to live stream right now. Why why are you bothering <laughs> me? Yeah, you got the best job in the world, man. I love my job, man. Yeah. And now, like, we just, uh, I, I was looking at some new stuff today, like a new project that I'm working on. You don't want to see this? Yeah, we want to see that mess, man. Hop on. I'll send you the link. Again. You said you're working on a new project? Yeah, so I got, I'm working on a new project, and I was, like, I was blowing Heath up today, like, telling him, like, oh, my God, this is the most amazing thing. I don't want to give away too much because I don't know who's watching, <laughs> but... It's just some crazy stuff that I was like looking into and it just gets me so excited. So like, yeah, the fact that I get to work on new and exciting things, I dig that. Nice. I have fun with it. And, but like today I was also having that struggle too. It's because like so much of my job is so much more like marketing now or like I don't get as much as of the, of the tech as I want to. I, I need more of it. So I keep trying to figure out like all these little projects that I can give myself to just make it happen. <laughs> Yeah, you just gotta 
I don't know, man. You're creative, so I'm sure that you will figure out a way to, you know, make that happen. I'll figure it out. If you see a, a question in the chat, you can go ahead and holler at me. All right, let me see. And you're, in the, you're in the StreamYard thing too, right? So I don't know if you can actually click on the questions or not. If I just questions the... there too, huh? Yeah, I didn't even see these. What's up, team? Y'all got questions? Drop them in the chat. Here's one right here. Hey, man, is it a good idea to start from the cloud as a beginner? Can I get a job fast this way? Yeah. Um, the cloud. If you want to be in the cloud, I don't see a reason why you can't start there. Um, what I would do is identify some job titles that you're interested in that are entry level. Like, um, let me see. I would just go to like Indeed and type in entry level cloud jobs or entry level cloud. And once you establish that, then from there, it's all about identifying the skills that you need. So as we know, a lot of entry level cloud jobs are going to require you to have foundational cloud knowledge. So that's going to be your AWS cloud practitioner or another vendor's entry level certification. And so once you establish that and that you understand the cloud, the next thing I would do is um, start building a portfolio around the things that you're learning. And you can do that through GitHub, a blog, whether that be your personal blog, LinkedIn, using something like medium.com or starting a YouTube channel and kind of talking about the things that you're learning. So that way, since you're new to tech, you're building um, an online resume that people can find when they Google you to see if you are qualified for a role because without any experience, how they're going to know that you can do a job because the cloud is different than desktop support. You know, desktop support, um, you can kind of come into that role and kind of learn it, but the cloud, a lot of times you have to learn so so many different skills, like, like I mentioned before, Linux, understanding APIs, understanding some basic coding language, it depends on, you know, what the cloud role is, but it's kind of a bigger barrier to entry than something like a desktop support role. So like I mentioned in the beginning, identify some roles that you find interesting that you want to, um, you would like to do, and then go after those skills for that role. And then once you start building those skills, you start building your online resume. Of course, you want to network on like Twitter, and LinkedIn with people that are already doing it in the industry because you never know what type of doors that will open for you. That's perfect. I love that. And now we're going to add another guest to the, to the mix here. What's going there on, Mr. Is. What's going on, Mr. Heath Adams? What's up guys? How you doing? <laughs> Wonderful. What's How up, you doing? Heath? Good, good. Living the dream, man. Oh, that's a nice hat you have on there. Oh, well, you're wearing your, it doesn't match my outfit at all, but you're wearing your, <laughs> I had to throw it on. I, I appreciate I feel, that. I feel I feel left out. I we need to get a you a hat. hat. We gotta get yeah. you a hat. <laughs> All right. There's Send this gentleman three, a hat. There's only three in existence currently, so um. I know, and I keep trying to get that third one now, or going to be. <laughs> Because I like I I wear my hat all the time, and I was wearing it when I was cleaning the garage the other day, and I'm like, I'm getting this thing all dirty. Like, what well, look, am I doing? Yeah, like it just shows all the dirt on. Yeah, it. yep. it gets dusty. Drives me nuts. Wait a minute, time out, time out. Hold your hat, hold your head down again. Is that a fifty nine fifty? Oh it man, it is, man. Ah, he's winning. <laughs> <laughs> Only the best. Only the best. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, so Heath, you got to tell everybody who you are since you're joining the stream. For everybody who doesn't know who Heath Adams is, please take a, a second here. Tell us uh, about you. Yeah, my name's Heath Adams. Uh, we run a little shindig called TCM Security. We do pen testing and uh, ethical hacking, cybersecurity services, and cybersecurity training. So, and Zach, uh, Zach is my partner in crime over at TCM Security. We have a good time. I have a good time. I was nerding out today, hardcore. I was yeah. having a blast. Today. I can tell when you get excited because all you do is send me like a hundred messages, and I'm like, Zach, I can't even keep up with you, man. <laughs> you're like squirrel. Sorry. No, it it's is. good. I like when you're excited. It's super exciting. Super exciting. Oh, this is a crossover. This is like the mega crossover episode happening right now. People, the chat is just like going nuts. 
Hey. Oh, yeah. All right. <clears throat> so uh, I'm going I'm to start this quick. I'm going to start this off with a question. To security. Who? That's a broad term. Can you kind of define what security is and how does it apply to IT? I feel like I'm being interviewed right now. Yes, um, you are on the spot. <laughs> so, so for me, the I guess the idea of security is making something, uh, I guess, hardening something more than it was before. Um, so there's no perfect definition, I don't think, of security. I think that you. Like, and there's no perfect security in my mind. When people say like something's unhackable or unbreakable, I think that's a silly statement. Um, but you know, as a security professional, our job is to make it more, maybe more difficult than uh, you know. Uh, I guess backing up a little bit is for what I tell people is you want to you want your neighbor to be more desirable than you um, in terms of like getting broken into kind of thing. Same concept from a personal or a business standpoint, like. If I if I've got multi-factor, I've got long passwords. That makes it a little less desirable to come after me than it does to go after um, maybe somebody else who does it. Same thing with companies. If you're just adding a little bit of layer time after time, year after year, you're making it a little bit harder. And uh, hackers are unless they're really motivated, likely going to go somewhere else where it's easier. And, uh, so that's my my view of security. Is not there's no perfect security. There's no perfect secure anything. But uh, just trying to make things a little bit more difficult for the uh, the bad guys. Nice, nice, nice. What got you, what got you in the security? Uh, my bad, well, my bad, <laughs> I'm just, just going to pop out this chat now and let you guys take over. Uh, I mean, for me, getting into security was, um, it was something I was interested in. Um, I, I, you know, I always, honestly, I grew up with uh, a parent that was kind of criminal minded, if, if you will say. So like I, I grew up going through all kinds of shit, seeing my mom like write bad checks and like, uh, have multiple names and do some crazy stuff like uh she she rented a house to herself that she paid off with the other name that was on section eight that paid to her landlord genius stuff man like just really like scheming so like i wanted to like take that kind of criminal mindset but kind of apply it to to kind of the, the overall good mm -hmm. um i didn't learn that ethical hacking was a thing until i was already working in it but i was always more um, kind of like in the mindset of like, I want to, I want to improve things. I want to improve society. I kind of want to change or take some of the things my mom taught me, but make it for, for good, I guess. Um, nice. and then when I heard about ethical hacking, I just, I never realized that you could get paid to break into things. I always thought it was bad people that, that did that. So that's kind of where the passion took off and, um, just kind of made my way into it from there. That's good stuff, man. Salute to you, man. You've been putting in a lot of work to help people change their lives. I admire it. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. All right, I'm gonna be quiet, Zach. Go ahead. No, you're, you, hey, you you guys are jamming, man. I'm just letting it go. It's all good. I I never knew you could get paid to like break into things either. So like that was that's just wild. Yeah. Like going on a physical pen test with Heath Adams over there. Like that was the like most wild, crazy, awesome experience of my entire life. I'll always remember that. Thank you. Love you. Long time. That was hey, amazing. That was that was fun. Um, <laughs> would would do it again would do it again i would do it again in a yeah, heartbeat for sure I, hopefully they bring us back next year so I, I tell courtney that like every day i'm like hey i hope we get another physical penta soon because i'm itching i'm like need i need i need to go in <laughs> need to make something happen here hey y'all can come to my house and do a physical pen test and see how All secure right. my home network is like right. got, you have like home no home network now i thought what you mean? I, got, I thought you. Well, I mean, you got oh, like a few things. Yeah, I got a, I got a router and stuff. I still have like my house segmented the way it's <laughs> the way I think it's secure. Or wait, there is no security. So yeah, I'm just out here in the wild. I need some help, he. <laughs> I'm gonna send Zach. He got you. <laughs> I'm done. I was just there. <laughs> you didn't. You didn't break in. No, they let me in because I just had social, one, social one of those faces. Yeah. <laughs> He put a key logger on my desktop. <laughs> oh. Sure did. You better watch out. Sorry, I'm, I was looking through the chat right now. Um, sorry, I, I had a question, and then it, my uh, chat window ran away from me. I Love see you. a question from Joshua L. Go ahead. It's about um, computer science. Yeah. Computer science degrees are they good for IT or just programming? They're, they're good for IT. It's just an, a degree in general, man. Like it's just gonna that just seals one of those boxes. 
you know, but the computer science degree is definitely leaning more towards that programming side of things for sure. You guys have thoughts on that? I just think overall having a degree is a great thing for you. Yeah. I, I think that um, the degree is like when people ask about it, it's like, do you need it? Maybe not. Um, but if you have it, it definitely, it opens more doors for you. Um, from the computer science side of things, it opens a lot more doors for you, I think, because um, even if you say, screw it, I hate IT, I hate cybersecurity, you still have a computer science degree to fall back on. Where if you go for a straight cybersecurity degree, if you end up being in a field that you do not like, then you don't have anything to fall back on. So yeah. um, computer science is way more robust. It's more than IT. It's more than cybersecurity. You can do so many things with it. So, um, you know, I think that's just a, a wide variety of options that you have that you open yourself up to with a comp side degree. Yeah, I, I think the computer science degree teaches you the um the intangibles of being a programmer you know a lot of times when you learn to self-code there's that um that i would say that structured knowledge that you don't have that you get in college you know there's been so many times where i'm doing network automation and then somebody was like man i haven't used my computer science degree ever but at some point in their career it comes up and now they can use it yeah learning that structure it's like just the foundation of how things are supposed to be built, right? Like that could be so incredibly important. Yeah. And when you don't have that, sometimes it could take a while for you to kind of gain that knowledge after the fact, right? Like it, it, it makes some, it, it, you, you find that you have a lot of bad habits, you know, yeah. compared to like working with, like when you start working with a lot, a lot of other people who maybe have gone through college or who have more structure because of, you know, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z that was put into place before. Right. Like, that makes sense. College just takes so long, like, <laughs> you know. For sure. Yeah. Uh, so here's one. Comp TA plus versus AWS cloud pr practitioner, which is most desirable to employers nowadays. Like, those are just on two different ball fields, so. That's apples and oranges. Yeah. Dwan's just like, yep, mm -hmm, I'm not <laughs> even going to touch that one. <laughs> Degrees do get past UHR, for sure, all day. And if you want to work in management too, like a degree could be very helpful for you. Yeah, for sure. It's almost required to be like CISO level or, or any, I guess, management level, IT level. So. All right, here's one. I dive into the cloud, want to focus on cloud security. You have a networking background, want to know how cloud security can be the same or different from everyday cybersecurity. That's a great question for both of you. You guys should just mesh on this one together. I'll just sit back and fill my thumbs. Who's going first? Yeah, I don't have a cybersecurity background, so I think he. Yeah, uh, so if you got a networking background, you want to know how cloud security can be the same or different. Um, so from cloud security, I think you, it, it takes a lot of concepts. If you're in networking, it takes a lot of concepts that are already existent and just puts it into a virtualized environment. Um, I think where a lot of people maybe go wrong is how they configure those environments um, because now you're, you have the ability to misconfigure your IAM. You have the ability to yeah. um, be overly permissive for your ports and your services. It's easy to just like default configure something and say, here we go. Uh, I'm going to put this box online, but everybody can access that machine. Or if you like leave SSH open on a machine, you're not, um, you're not, uh, you know, doing an allow list on that, or you're not um, doing it to where it's only a, uh, a pre share key kind of situation. You're just letting anybody hammer it, which I've done before when I started, I like, I, I set up a, a machine in the cloud and within like 10 minutes, I was locked out of SSH because there's bots already just out there trying to trying yeah. to guess your password. <laughs> so uh, it's a lot of default configurations, a lot of misconfigurations. Um, there's a lot of ability for human error um, in, in cloud security, in my opinion. Yeah, and um, the API keys that people you know, may upload to GitHub or, you know, you gotta guard all of that when it comes to the cloud. Um, but what about the cybersecurity piece? Hey, like, how does, how, do, I don't know, what's, what's the general overview of cybersecurity? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't change from a, I guess from a hacking perspective, it really doesn't change that much. Like, if you're talking about the cybersecurity from information disclosure, I think like, yeah, if your S3 buckets are open or if you're putting API keys to GitHub, then yeah, that's information disclosure that can happen. From a, from a, like, I want to hack you perspective, a machine is a machine, um, open ports, open ports, services right. are services. If you're not doing best practices on those, 
it doesn't matter if you're on-prem or in the cloud yep. um, at, at the end of the day. So you still, I, I don't think the, the cybersecurity process changes or the mindset doesn't change from, from cloud to on-prem. Yeah. How, how, how often do you find like API keys and stuff like that when you're doing like OSINT, like just out in the wild for the company you're targeting? Oh, there's all kinds of tools to look for those. I mean, it's right. It's fairly, I, I'd say it happens a lot. It doesn't necessarily, necessarily happen with all of our clients um, because we have a small sample size where, you know, we're, we're doing what, 100 clients a year at most. And um, you're talking, but if you go read bug bounty write-ups, you'll see like it happens all the time where people are yeah. exposing sen sensitive information in like GitHub or, or somewhere like that. So um, it's a very, very common misconfiguration. OWASP top 10 security misconfigurations. Um, it's, it's very common. Yeah, there's there's like bots that actually scan GitHub repos like mm -hmm. constantly. Like like people scan open internet ports, they actually scan GitHub repos looking for API keys and passwords. I actually uh, just got an email from GitHub the other day for a CVE on the uh, the Python script that we were working on. Uh, saying you need to update, yeah, update your code in it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a cool thing about GitHub is that it lets you know when you got um, vulnerabilities in your code. I thought that was really cool. I was like, that's interesting. That's what made me want to message you. Like, that's I, I remember now because I was like, oh, shit, shoot. <laughs> YouTube's going to yell at me. Uh, here, when I say uh, to get the CCA and not the Network Plus, why not get both? Would someone hiring not care much if you have both? Some companies will care if you have the CompTIA Plus if they require, or the CompTIA Network Plus if, you know, they require it. But otherwise, like, the CCNA is just more marketable. And that's something that Mr. Lightfoot over there has been saying for <laughs> for years upon years yeah I, i'm a strong believer the 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 fastest way to get to the top is in a straight line and yes the network plus is in that direction it's going to be not vendor specific but at the same time the ccna will add immediate value to your resume and it helps you learn an actual job right the um, Network Plus gives you a networking foundational knowledge, but there's still a lot of things that you're going to have to learn when you get in tech, right? So, and, and the landscape is changing. We're not really installing printers and things like that anymore. So it's, 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 a, it's different. I'm not knocking the certification. Like it has value to teach you knowledge. But for me, if I want to add value to my resume and I'm looking for a job, I'm gonna go straight to the CCNA if I want to be in networking. Yeah, and the the network plus is, in my experience, more equivalent to what used to be the CSENT. Um, you know, it's like a very like basic kind of this is the foundational skills you should have, and then when you start getting into the CCNA, you start adding in actual hands on, um, you know, actually getting into the console, actually configuring some basics of Cisco equipment, and doing even a little bit of troubleshooting. Um, so it's like going from theory to actually getting hands on and applying that. And that's where the CCNA is next level. There's no, there's no generic certification. I don't think that's out there that gets you like hands on training like it does. So yeah, Cisco is vendor specific, but at the end of the day, um, I think those concepts apply to other vendors and um, Cisco is like the, the number one networking equipment that's out there. So it's not like you're, you're selling yourself short by going and getting a CCNA. It's, it's a, it, it's a, superior certification because it teaches you more and trains you on more honestly yeah and it's cheaper it's it actually cheaper? cheaper oh man i did I, not know that i just did a video on way. this the other day yeah it's <sighs> cheaper i it blew my mind i was like what yeah anyway sorry but yes news to me. it's and it's like 10 times more marketable if you <laughs> look up you know network plus compared to a ccna on like indeed I think Network Plus had like 1,100 jobs and the CCNA had like 13,000 jobs. Wow. Yeah. So marketability, like that is like huge nowadays. Like that is more important in, in so many aspects than the technical skills that you have if you're trying to get started and really get your best foot forward. Mm -hmm. Like creating like a good uh, network around you and soft skills to, to boot, like you'll be unstoppable. Because so much of like foundational it entry-level it is trained on the job truly yeah i don't know how you guys feel about that but that's those are my thoughts i, I agree yeah sorry i'm looking through chat i'm just looking for questions you guys can pop off anytime you want i appreciate you guys popping on
that's always fun. Get some yeah, this is, uh, was unexpected, but. Yeah, I, I made a comment about we're not installing printers no more. And Brandon said he's still installing printers. It, it wasn't a jab or anything like that. I just remember the days of when I had to not only install printers, but I had to repair printers, you know, the, and carry these big old 5100 printers <laughs> around my office. I don't think mm -hmm. people do that anymore. <laughs> I would hope not. I know the last place that I worked, we used a, like a, a vendor who came in and, and serviced all of our printers, which is like, it was the best thing in the entire world because I hate yep. printers and everybody knows that. When's yeah. the last time you installed a printer, Heath? We just talked about printers the other day because we were doing <laughs> tax stuff. It's like uh, the one time a year I need a printer. Home home printer? Like, I no, guess no. With, I'll, with, I'll oh, like world. IT? Uh, yeah. God, help, when I was in help desk, for sure. Um I, I used to work at a help desk at a university and that was just printer problem after printer yeah. problem. Like, God, so many people are trying to print. Um, so that was basically my, my first help desk experience is basically just troubleshooting printers all day. <laughs> Do you know what made me hate printers the most? Honestly, is working on call at a hospital, getting called at two 30 in the morning because a nurse jammed a printer. And when I looked at the print queue, she wasn't printing out orders. She wasn't printing out anything to do with patients. She was trying to print some gosh darn recipes. And I was like, <laughs> are you kidding me? You called me and woke me up because you jammed the print queue with, with recipes. Well, yeah, I was bored. I'm like, okay. It happens all the time. It's like it still continuously happened. Oh, here's a great one. Can you tell everyone about the importance of providing exceptional customer service to your users? You guys want to touch on that at all? Uh, I've got a phone call, so I'm going to go on mute, but, uh, okay. You do I'll that. Be right back. You're good. Mr. Lightfoot. You want, me uh, or you, you want to go on that? I think, I think if you're in an entry level role, you're just starting your career. Let's focus there because cu excellent customer service should be across the board. But let's just talk about the beginning of your career. People remember how you treat them, right? And so if you're providing customer service, you never know who you're helping and you never know where you will meet them again in your career. So I think learning how to, even though when a customer is upset or there's an issue and they're not coming across, let's say, very professional. They could be having a bad day. They could have a document or some type of presentation that's due like in an hour or so and their com computer just crapped out. You never know what somebody's going through. So I think always having empathy in your role and remembering that, you know, you're hired to help the company. You're hired to be the person that they can go to and feel comfortable talking to about problems. And so always keeping that in mind and trying to do your best and put your best foot forward in your role will take you a long way in this, in this career field. That's my opinion. Yeah. So, um, reputation is, is everything. Um, it is a very, very small, uh, field, believe it or not, in terms of, in terms of that. So, um, you know, it, it goes with the old kind of adage that if you provide good customer service, somebody might tell one person, but if you provide bad customer service, they're going to go tell everybody. Um, and that reputation will follow you to, to jobs or if you're a company that will follow you uh, amongst people as well. So, um, you know, just providing good customer service should be key important for, for you, for your employer, for your career, um, however else you want to look at it. Yeah, and it's a, it's a skill that you... I mean, you learn over time and you, you learn to get better at it over time, right? But it's something that you'll have to deal with throughout your entire IT career. So if you like, you think you're going to jump into IT because you're going to sit in a basement all day and not have to talk to people, like, I'm sorry, it's just not how it works anymore. Like, you're going to be talking to people. You're going to be talking to your end users. You're going to be talking to your managers, to your VPs. You know, you're going to be talking to people. So learning and that and understanding the importance of the soft skills is going to be extremely beneficial to your future for sure. It will help you go places as these gentlemen have laid that out for you. But, um, just, you know, in general, having the good soft skills and communication skills, um, is something that you should be, you know, be aware of and adding to your, you know, your skill set, if you will. Sorry, my, my COVID brain's acting up. 
looking through the chat. Now I have kids upstairs screaming too. Green shirt is literally dropping out to phone a friend. He sure was. Yeah, I had to ask my wife uh, what the answer to that question was. Well, she provided a, a great Nailed answer. She did. She didn't. She did nail it. Um, we'll do like two more questions because I, I got to figure out what's going on with my children. Cool. It's almost bedtime anyway. And I wasn't planning to do this this long either anyway. But thank you guys for joining, first of all. Hey, thank you for having Same. me, bro. Same. Um, so if you, anybody has any questions, now is your time. And I'll let these guys pick out some questions if you want. Ooh. Oh, this is a great one, though. Sorry. J. Cruz. They have an interview tomorrow. What happens if they don't know the technical question that their current work environment doesn't have? Well, so basically, what what happens if in an interview they don't know the answer to a technical question? What's a good way to uh, respond? Uh, say you don't know. Be honest. Yeah, yeah just be honest. Uh, worst thing you can do is bullshit it. So um, I'll say what's come up in interviews for me is um, I've had interviews in the past where somebody asked me a question I don't know the answer and they tell me the answer. Uh, it's great to bring a pen and paper with you because that question might show up again. Um, a, a second interview if you're brought back. So just because you, you don't know the answer at the time, it, you should go home and review and research why you got that wrong um, and, and always try to be improving. Yeah, for sure. Just be honest. That's, that's the biggest thing. Um, being honest about what you what you know, what you don't know, present, you know, your best self and just, you know, leave, leave it in the interview. Leave everything for in sure. the interview. Yeah, I always like to say, like, if I, especially if I don't know the answer, like, I don't know th that answer, you know, but this is what I'm going to do to figure it out. This is what I'm going to do when I get home. Let them know that, hey, you don't know it, but you know how to find the answer and you're willing to take the time to figure out, you know, what the answer to that is, you know, so you don't necessarily have to give them the opportunity to, to tell you the answer. You can just, you know, throw it right back in their face and say, I'm going to go home and figure this out since I didn't know. And then if they do give you the answer, that that's even better. You know, it's even more reason to, to make sure you go home and, and learn more about whatever that question was that you didn't know. Yeah. Tell everybody on the PMPT, Heath. Uh, it's a Just great kidding. certification to, to go for. How about that? Just get out. I, was, I had to put you on the spot, man. I'm sorry. I could go on and all day about that for everybody. And Brandon was the one who asked about that. They asked a more silly question that I won't ask you. And but. throwing out SOC 2 categories, like it's the CISSP here. Oh, speaking of which, congratulations. Thanks, yeah. Yeah, congrats. Burned in my brain. Yeah, thank you. Was it more difficult than you thought it would be? Uh, yes and no. Like, like I feel like certifications um, sometimes can get overhyped in a, in a sense that like some people will think that the, the hardest thing ever and then some people think it's the easiest thing when you have a certification that that is that big that many people have taken it you get a lot of varying opinions on it so um in, in my opinion having gone through it like i was able to get through it in a week and that's because i've worked in cybersecurity. like it literally is for some people people have worked in cybersecurity. now if you don't meet the five-year requirement you go for the associate that exam is hard as hell for sure um, and there's a lot of questions where it's really 50-50 answers and you have to pick the one that's best for the company, that's best from a management perspective and not the best from a technical perspective, which is hard to do, especially if you're a technical person. So I think it's where a lot of people get tripped up. But if you have security experience and you have management experience, the CSSP, I don't think it's all that bad. Awesome. That's good to know for sure. Um, this is going to be the last question for the night. And I think it's a good one to, to kind of end on because it's something that doesn't get talked about enough. Sometimes it does. And I think we have a good group of people that can talk about it. But uh, how about mental health and changes in tech? How, how does how does the ever evolving landscape of technology affect your mental health, if at all, any? I think uh, I mentioned the quickest, the, the fastest way to the top is a straight line. And in tech with things changing so fast and all of the information we're like in the best time to enter in tech and also the worst time because it can be so distracting so i think having a plan for what you want to do where you want to go and staying focused on that plan you know and being okay with pivoting if you need to pivot but if you don't need to pivot really focusing on the things that are going to get to where you want to go 
and eliminating those distractions. That really helps me um, to guard my mental health, I should say, as well as surrounding yourself with like-minded people. You know, um, a support system is um, can be really helpful in tech, you know, if, cause, because there will become times, there will come times when you get stuck. There's going to be times when you don't know something. There's going to be times where you feel overwhelmed. There's going to be times where you feel overworked. Like that's a part of the tech. And sometimes you may realize that, you know what, I had enough of this job and I need to move on. That's okay. You know, just make sure that you um, always are presenting your best self in that role. So that way, if you do decide to leave, you don't burn a bridge and you don't um, leave a bad reputation. That That's my two cents. Yeah, I mean, from the, the cybersecurity perspective, um, kind of like Duan was talking about, it's like things change so much that there's so much burnout because you're like, I got to know everything. I, I got to I gotta learn the newest and the latest and the greatest. And you're expected to be on top of your game. And when you're not, if you start being complacent, even for a short period of time, it can wear on you. And then you're having to play catch up with your peers. Uh, so, you know, mental health and burnout is, is a, a real issue with, with um, you know, cybersecurity. It's one of those things where I think employers have to um, be cognizant of that, make sure that their employees are are getting breaks, um, getting the opportunities to re- reset, refresh, and maybe even go study. Because it's hard to work a full time job and then stay up on top of everything that's coming out. Um, so I, I think it's one of those things where uh, employers need to empower that, where they give employees time off to go, uh, you know, improve and, and make sure that even that they're able to take days off if they need it, just for a reset. Um, you know, a one day off can be a huge difference in, in somebody's life. So, um, but just as a personal thing, like taking breaks, uh, you know, taking taking 15 minutes to go for a walk, taking an hour, go play video games for the day. It's okay to take a, a break um, as long as it's not like extended periods of time where you're like, hey, you know, you just fall off the wagon. But, um, you know, if, if you're taking breaks, I think that's good for your mental health, even if it's a week or a month or depending on where you need it. Um, it's just one of those things that you got to be cognizant and you need to know when to say uh, en- enough's enough as well. Yeah. Uh, tech is one of those fields where you need to learn to, to pace yourself because you, you have a very, very visible network around you who they, they move at a much quicker pace than, than we do at times. Right. And this is, I'm speaking directly to you're watching people on social media. They're all doing these wonderful, amazing things. And you're constantly trying to play catch up to everybody else instead of worrying about what you're doing and, and focusing on the things that you need to do. You have to, to stop worrying about what everybody else is doing and just focus on you. Take the time to worry about you and, and take, take the time because that's important. You don't, it's not a race. We're not racing to get into IT. We're not racing each other to learn things quicker than one another. We're just trying to learn things and we're trying to make ourselves better. And sometimes that takes more time than another person and that's okay. And you have to understand that. That that is so important to understand more than anything I, I think is, uh, especially everybody here who's watching this, you're on social media, you know that this is a thing. You, you see all the success of other people. It doesn't always have to be you that quickly. So please just take your time and learn the things, absorb the material and and don't get burnt out. Don't let yourself get too overworked in in the things that you're doing. As Heath said, take a break. It can be very, very helpful for you. So thank you gentlemen for being on here tonight on this short notice and just chatting and and having fun. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Comparisons to Steve Joy. Yes. (laughs) Facts. That that is your thing to say for sure. Comparison is a thief of joy for sure. hundred percent. Yeah. All right, y'all. I hope you all have a great night. Take it easy and wonderful and all that fun stuff. Thank you guys. Peace out. See ya.